Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. My name is Leon Jones. This evening, I'm going to call it the scam series, but it really isn't a scam. But I'm going to talk to you tonight on how government works. And I'm also going to put a little bit of tidbits in there about Kamala Harris. Because this woman, and, and, and you black men out there, you vote for her, then you all need your head examined because she's not for you. She put a number of you in jail in Oakland, California. This woman is a Marxist, socialist, communist, but I'll get back to that in a moment. Now, many of us don't understand how government works, particularly African-American people. I don't care how many HBCUs you've all attended. They didn't teach you anything about American government. And this is why colleges, before you graduate, and shout out to my alma mater, Purdue University, they're doing this. In order for you to graduate from Purdue University, you have to take what we call a civics liberty, a uh, literacy test. It's a civics literacy test. Now, what you have to do, you have to do a couple of things. You have to take an American history class, a government and politics class, and then you have to take a final exam. Now, a final exam is open book. Now, I've already taken it, and it's a good thing because there are a lot of individuals who are going to college and they don't even know who the president, the vice president, they don't even know what the House of Representatives is, they don't know what the Senate is. So, what I'm going to do is explain it to you. Now, first of all, you have to understand that. If you are hearing these liberals out here, these liberal politicians saying we are a democracy, they're lying to you. We are a republic. Now, we have freedom with laws. Yes, we have the First Amendment. We have the Second Amendment. Many people don't read the Constitution. The Constitution was set up so we don't have a monarchy. When you look at our style of government, it is a parliamentary style government. If you look over in England, they have the prime minister, which is equal to the president. And they got the House of Lords, like your Republicans. And they have the House of Commons. Well, when we deal with government and how it works, we have three branches of government. We have the executive, we have the judicial, and then we have the legislative branch. And all three check each other so we can create what we call a balance, or we call it checks and balances. Now, one thing you need to know, many of us, when we go to vote, we're going to vote for the president. Now, you don't vote for the vice president, but you vote for the president. Now, what everybody is forgetting right now is there are other races that are going to be taking place besides the presidential race. There are going to be congressional races. There are going to be senatorial races. And in some states like mine here in Indiana, there are going to be gubernatorial races, which that deals with the governor. And then there are going to be state house races, where you're going to have the, the state house and the state senate. Now, something you need to know. The president is a figurehead. Now, the president can sign executive orders. But do you know the people 
that have basically the most power, it's the, it's the legislative branch. Now, the judicial branch basically looks at certain laws to see if laws have been broken. They'll step in, and this is your Supreme Court. Your Supreme Court members are your lifetime members. Now, your executive branch, that's where your president and your vice president are. They're the ones that sign the executive orders. That's what your president does. Now, your vice president. Your vice president is basically the second person in charge. Now, the real role of a vice president as well is the vice president is the president of the Senate. Now, what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. If you have a Senate and you are voting on some legislation to get passed and you have a 50-50 tie, because remember something, in Congress, you have 538 seats. 100 of them are Senate seats and 438 of them are House seats. Now, in the Senate, if there is a tie, 50-50, the vice president breaks the tie. Now, Congress is different. The House of Representatives, what they do, they hold the purse strings. While the Senate, the Senate does all the confirmations, such as if a president picks a Supreme Court nominee. Well, it takes the Senate to confirm that person. And that's the same way for all of an administration's executive personnel, like your Secretary of Defense, your Secretary of, of Security, or your Director of I call it the director of security, which that's had a lot of problems, or your FBI director. Now, many of us aren't looking at it from this perspective. We are voting on feelings, or we're voting, particularly the ones who are voting for Kamala Harris. Many people are voting for her because she's a woman. Now, I'm not going to say that women can't lead, but in this country, we've seen too much feminism. That's why Hillary didn't make it. People don't like her. People don't like Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris did not win a single vote when she was running for president in 2020. She also called Joe Biden a racist. Now, the problem I have with Kamala Harris is she's radical. Now, I don't like radicals on the left or the right. See, if you go too far to the right, you have fascism. If you go too far to the left, you have communism. And if you look at this country, this country wants to go too far to the left. Now, up until the 1960s, this country was a little bit further right. And Black people were Republicans, and they were conservative. Now, if you look at it now, number of your Black people, 90% of them vote Democrat. I remember I voted Democrat because I was told to vote Democrat. In fact, I didn't even know anything about Malcolm X until 1990 because I went to an HBCU called Virginia Union University, and they didn't tell us anything about Malcolm X. They told us about Martin Luther King, a little bit about Marcus Garvey, about the Black Panthers. Now, here in the United States, when it comes to government, we have a representative government. It's supposed to be representative. Now, there is always a chance that elections can be stolen. Now, I'm not going to bring the 2020 election up. But I will say this, you look at, I believe his name is Maduro and Gonzalez, 
in Venezuela. Well, Gonzalez, who was a non-socialist and non-communist, had to lead in all of the votes. But somehow, the socialists, and this guy was from the Hugo Chavez reign, the socialists utilized his military and police. They removed all the voting machines. Then they were going after people with their guns. You see, what socialists and communists do, they want direct rule. They don't want to give you a choice. They want to tell you what they want to tell you. And it's going to be their way or off with your head. You look at people like Fidel Castro and see, when we deal with government, you have to have some government, but I believe we have too much government. And when you have a bloated government, it causes a lot of problems. Government gets into your lives and you have no privacy. And I'm going to tell you this. Once you auction off your freedom or the government starts taking your freedom, you don't get it back. Now, Getting back on some things Kamala Harris said, she said equity. Now, in order for you to get equity, you're going to have to take something from somebody else. In other words, she wants everybody to have the same result. Well, in the real world, that never happens. We all start from a different spot. Now, equality to me and I'm going to be reasonable about it, it means equal opportunity. Now, of course, they're calling Kamala Harris a DEI, which, in my humble opinion, that's really affirmative action. Now, I believe affirmative action is a good program. However, when you make it about race, that's when it becomes a bad program. Now, if you think about it, who has benefited off of Affirmative action. White women. I, as a black man, I don't benefit from affirmative action. I never did. Everything I have to do, I have to create myself. Most of the government programs, and this is why, if you think about it, when it comes to voting, most of your women are going to be liberal. And one of the reasons why we have the issues today it's because a lot of women are more tolerable of everything where men aren't. I mean, I, I, I just believe that too many women want more government in their lives to try to make everything equal. And here on this platform, we've heard everything about the equal patriarch, the evil patriarchy. Well, no, feminism is evil because what feminism has done, that's gone right into some of our representatives who believe in feminism. And this is a scary thing about Kamala Harris. Now, she gave a speech and, you know, shout out to Barry Cunningham, Anton Daniels. Shout out to my boy, Angry Snowman. Uh, who else can I give a shout out to? Uh, Shout, shout out to Hood Servative. Uh, shout out to Anthony Bryan Logan. Shout out to um, Random Tatum, Candace Owens. Shout out to CT, Chaotic Truth. And there are more people out there. Shout out to Black Conservative Perspective. You have a lot of black men out here. When we talk about woke, we're not talking about the woke that the liberals are woke. That's not woke. That's sleeping. They believe in communism. They do. They believe in government ruling everything to make everything equal because they think everything is not fair. Well, let me tell you something. Life isn't fair. Now, let me hop back to how government works again so you'll know so I don't miss anything at all when you have legislation 
could be a Senate bill, which is an SB, or a House bill, which is an HB, or a Senate resolution, or a House resolution. Here's what happens. You get some legislation drawn up by the House. They look at everything. Then it goes to the Senate. Okay, the Senate, they're going to look at it. Now, some things they'll agree with the House, some things they may not. So if they don't agree with some of the House versions, they send it back to the House and they go ahead and make the changes. Okay, they send it back to the Senate. Now, once the Senate adopts it, they send it up to the President. Now, the president, in order for that bill to be signed in the law, he's going to look at it or he's going to look at it and say, okay, he'll sign it in the law. Now, if the, and, and, and the governors will do the same thing. This is the same way with the mayors. Again, local government, whether it's your city, county, and state, it, this is all the same. Well, when your executive signs a bill, it becomes law. Now, what happens if the executive doesn't sign the bill? They're going to veto it. Now, here's the thing about veto. They can veto that bill. But can that vetoed bill become law again? Yes, it can. And here's how it can be law again. I believe it's two thirds or three quarters of the House and Senate, they can override that veto. And see, everybody is talking about Kamala Harris getting it. And, that, and this is the example that I'm giving you. See, she can get in, she can pick a vice president. But since we live in a, a divided country, it's all partisan. Well, if the Republicans have the majority Senate and the majority House and Kamala Harris, she's president, and she wants something to go through, what's going to happen? It's not going to go through. And if it happens throughout her four years, what is she? She's lame duck. And something else you all have to remember when you vote for president. Must understand, or when you're voting for your representatives as well, the president gets two four year terms, just like the governor. Now, in Virginia, the governor only gets a one term. They get one term in Virginia. I know I lived in Virginia. I was under Gilmore and, and, and uh, George Allen. Here in Indiana, the governor gets two terms. I lived in Maryland. The governor gets two terms. Now, the individuals, one of the reasons why nothing changes is because we have career politicians. And when you're in Congress, you can run forever. And I know that they gerrymander the districts and they have all the money because politics is aligned with a lot of money. Well, technically, your House members, they get two-year terms. Every two years, they have to go out and get elected again. Where your Senate, they're all six-year terms. And one of the big problems is you have Kamala Harris, and you even had Joe Biden. Joe Biden wanted term limits for the Supreme Court. And the reason why he wanted term limits for the Supreme Court is because he didn't like the fact that the Supreme Court has six conservative judges. In fact, he actually wanted 13 judges. Well, right now, it's nine. Until something changes, it's going to be nine. People have to understand, too, there are nine judges. And you must remember, too, when we deal with the House and Senate, you have the Senate Minority Leader and the Senate Majority Leader. Right now, the Senate Majority Leader is Chuck Schumer, and the Senate Minority Leader is Mitch McConnell. 
Both of them, they need to get the hell up out of there. Been in there too long. Now for the House, they, they've been fighting, but I believe it's Mark Johnson. And then, of course, the House Minority Leader. Then you got the House Minority Whip. You got Nancy Pelosi. And see, if you listen to what I'm saying and you understand how government works, let's say your candidate doesn't win the presidency. Well, then you better be voting for Congress people. Because if you vote for the right Congress people and your party gets the majority, you, you can make that president a lame duck. In fact, after this election in 2024, 2026 comes the midterm election. Now, if Trump wins, Trump already ran one term. So he can't run another term after this. Remember that. You can, and I know somebody, will, well, how could that happen? Well, here's how it happens. Four years is one term. So People think that the president can, okay, it's got to be two consecutive terms. It doesn't have to be consecutive. He can run one term, and if he gets tossed out, he can wait 12 years and run again. But that's the only term he can run. Now, within the government, so your third in command would be, let's say you have the president, the vice president, speaker of the house, and then, then I believe you have the secretary of defense in case something happens to the president. The president also has lifetime secret service, the president and the vice president. Must understand that as well. The purpose of government is to ensure that laws are being enforced. But the problem is the government isn't following their own laws. There is a lot of corruption in government, insider trading, which I can't do. Martha Stewart lied. That's why she went to jail. But uh, getting back to Kamala Harris, the problem with her is she came out and talked a lot of garbage. Well, I want to debate Trump. Well, they were supposed to get together at an event in Chicago where we had, a, where we had a number of national black activists. Trump showed up. She did. Now, that tells me right there. And I'm going to tell you what Trump needs to do. Trump needs to probably put somebody like Tulsi Gabbard. I don't care whether she's a Democrat or an independent, she wiped the floor up with Kamala Harris. Because Kamala Harris has a terrible record when it comes to being the DA. She hasn't even been in politics. In fact, she got in politics because of Barbara Boxer leaving in California. She didn't do anything in the Senate. I didn't know any, any one of her bills. She wasn't on any of the bills. She was a fill-in. Now she thinks she can run for president, but here's the problem. She can run for president, but they didn't have a primary. And what happened to Joe Biden now, they, if Kamala Harris wanted to be president right now, they can invoke the 25th Amendment. They're not going to do that. But right now she's campaigning, getting a bit cocky, thinking that she owns something now. But one must understand, you need delegates to be the nominee. She is not the nominee. She's still the vice president. And with her, they're throwing her a lot of softball questions. Now, if she came on my show, here on the 411 Talk Zone radio show, I'm going to ask her tough questions. And if she starts to go on and talk about abortion, I don't give a shit about that. I'm not here to have kids. Now, 
in case there's a incest, there's a there's a R E P E or the health of the mother. Other than that, you can give the baby up for adoption. And if you don't want babies, men protect yourselves. Women protect yourselves. You don't have to worry about the uh, the leading babies. Uh, I do believe that she's against families because she didn't have a family of her own. In fact, she doesn't even get along with her father. Her father doesn't like her behavior. And see, the problem I have with her, she's going to get the dumb black women to vote. And some of the celebrities. And I hate to say this, the ones that are my age, I'm 59 years old, early Gen X. She's going to get the early Gen Xers. She's, she's going to get a number of the baby boomers because they want to see the first, they call her the first black president. She's not black. She comes from an Indian heritage. In fact, she was raised in Canada. Her mom took her to Canada, her and her sister. People don't know that. Now, her father is Haitian. Now, remember, Haitian is not a race, that's a nationality. That's what we have to understand. Now, a number of individuals, particularly your women, and then it, she's had these bullshit Zoom calls, white dudes for Kamala Harris, Black women for Kamala Harris, white women. And the white women she had on there, they were the ditzy white women, the liberal white women who come from the suburbs. Let, let, let me tell you something. She's not going to get all the white women. She's not even going to get all the black men. She didn't have a show of black men for Kamala Harris. And then she tried to put on this act in Atlanta. Got Meg the Stallion up there. And she did her twerking. And that should be offensive to black people. I mean, if you think about it, we're already at the bottom, according to a lot of people. And other races think we eat fried chicken, watermelon, drink malt liquor, and twerk. That's not all of us. But she's running a campaign that's going to talk about gender and race. Not going to work. Because see, if I mean, I could, I could mop the floor up her with a, in a debate easily. Because I would ask her these questions. I said, okay. You want a debate? Here's how we would set the debate up. I'll go out there with you on CNN. You come with me on Newsmax. And then the last one could be a town hall meeting where we sit down, have a Newsmax moderator, and we can have a CNN moderator. No, she didn't want that. You know why she didn't want that? You see, one thing I respect about Donald Trump, you don't have to like him. He went to Chicago. He went, he went to he went to the doghouse up there. But he held his own up there. And there were three black women journalists. I knew two of them. April Ryan was one. April Ryan was the one that Donald Trump said, you ask stupid questions. You're a loser. I remember her. I believe April Ryan was on CNN. And then Harris Faulkner. She's on Fox. Don't know the other one. But the other one came up. And every time he was trying to answer a question, he's trying to ask him another question. You know how sisters get when they get triggered? Then they start to, their, 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 their feelings meter comes on, their defense mechanism. Then they want to shame you. And then, uh-uh, 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 no, you didn't. That's what they want to do. So he stopped her in the tracks. Said, you held me up for 35 minutes. Now, there's another thing. That meeting that they had was on CP time. I hate CP time, which is colored people's time. When you tell black people they got to be there, hey, we're going to have it at 1. It ain't at 1. It's going to be at 2 or 2.30. They're always late. Well, 
the meeting that he had with the black journalist in Chicago was supposed to start at one o'clock central time. Didn't start till 2.30. And then Trump went out to Harrisburg. And see, he's got guts because he's going back to Butler. And I've been to Butler. I lived in Pennsylvania. And then he's going to Atlanta. Now, let me tell you something. That shindig that Kamala Harris had in Atlanta, after the rappers, the twerking, there were people walking out. She didn't have a full stadium. Now, I guarantee Trump is going down there tomorrow. That stadium's going to be packed. He's drawing 60 to 100,000 people. Now, what does that mean? He's getting his base and more people in there because he's talking about the issues. See, Kamala Harris has a bad record. She doesn't want fracking. I lived in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania does a lot of fracking. She doesn't mind most of us paying 70 to 80% of our money to the government. My question to her is, and all you, you, you liberal loons out there, and all your establishment Republicans, would you pay 70 to 80 percent of your money to the government? If you can, why aren't you writing checks out? Why should I have to pay 70 to 80 percent? You see, and know, know that a number of these elites, they're the ones chipping in all the money for the campaign. All these politicians have been bought. It, politics is all a scam, be honest with you. It's all a scam. Because there are a lot of lobbyists out there. There are a lot of donors. The Democrats have act blue. The Republicans have win red. And if you think about it, information, you also have the media out here. The media is for the Democrats. And I'm talking about the alphabet channels and the cable channels. Now, I used to watch Fox News. Fox News is, is garbage to me now. Uh, Newsmax, well, Newsmax is just a reverberation of Fox News because most of the contributors went from Fox News to Newsmax. I mean, the only one that's really good that's going to give me some insightful information is Bill O'Reilly. Check his channel out. He's still the no spin zone, Tucker Carlson. Those individuals. There's another one out there, uh, name is Nana. Uh, Patricia Dixon is one of them. Um, Karen Kennedy. She, she's, she's about it. But they always take her channels down because she speaks the truth. Now, places where you need to go to, and I want you to go, sign up for a true social account. Sign up for a Rumble account. Listen to us on YouTube. And go to X, Twitter. I'm going to tell you something. If it weren't for Elon Musk and even Donald Trump with Truth Social, the Republicans' word wouldn't have been heard. And see, the media is not going to get into Kamala's record because she has a poor record. Now, again, going back, I'm going to tie her every bit to Joe Biden. I'm going to say, did you know Joe Biden had these, these issues? Of course she knew about it. She was the border czar. Now, it's funny because she tried to talk some smack about Trump not holding the border. I'm like, bullshit. She didn't hold the border. 15 to 20 million illegals. And you know what? For all you black cities out there run by black people, Democratic, you all are running into the ground. I don't care if you're a black woman or a black man. Many of you can't run anything. You don't know how to run your cities. I know in Gary, Indiana, I live here in Indiana, they're stealing the money. And what's going to happen is you're going to have people leaving the cities. And when that tax base is gone, you're up shit's creek. Bottom line, with a number of these cities out here, now, thank goodness Indianapolis isn't like that and Columbus, Ohio isn't like that. And I don't think Indianapolis, I know... Indianapolis does have Air Hall set. I know I work for the city of Indianapolis. He's 
right up there on the 25th floor of the city county building. Oh, no. He wants this city to be prosperous. See, I don't care if you have a D and an R on your sleeve. Make some sense. Tell your voters what you're going to do, and if you're going to tell them something, do it. Now, you might not like the way it gets done. So the problem with a lot of these politicians is they lie. They give you a lot of hope. But here's, a, here's what you need to know. Don't rely on them. Look at the policies. Are the policies there to help you make money or are they there to take money? Because, see, that's another thing. I'm going to ask, I would ask Kamala Harris. I said, okay, you say we have a good economy. Okay, why am I purchasing gas for four bucks a gallon? Why are my groceries high? Why is a used car so high? Why is rent? Why is buying a house so high? And then you say you created jobs? No, you didn't create jobs. And I know some idiots out there said, they're, they're going to say Trump took over a good economy. Well, investors knew Obama was getting out of there. So they started investing more. And they knew Trump was coming in in 2016. So the economy got better. Not that Obama left him with a good economy. Investors knew that they're going to have much better policies that are going to enable them to invest their money so the market would be a heck of a lot better and more jobs would be created. Now, Kamala claims that, oh, the economy is good. Well, no, it's not good. Oh, we've created jobs. No, you didn't create jobs. What you did is you took the jobs that haven't been filled yet and you're counting them as creation of jobs. You didn't create those jobs. They had already been there. And most people, and see, what I'm telling you on this video, in this video, is not to be so ignorant. Don't vote with your feelings. Again, I'm giving you the blueprint on how government really works. They gerrymander the districts. Something else that they do. There are a lot of companies that donate to certain candidates. You see, if you're going to be involved in any politics, you need these things to happen. You have to be well organized. You have to have a good financial backing. And you have to have an issue. And if you don't have enough money to start a lobbyist group, get in the lobbyist group. You have a lot of lobbyists out here. Politics also makes money. But you have to know what's going on. And right now, the people that are going to be voting for somebody like a Kamala Harris, they're low information voters. And particularly, they're ones, again, they're in my generation, Many of them don't understand technology. Uh, you're going to have ones that want to see the first president of color, first woman. I mean, heck, we already saw the first kind of half melanated Obama. He was biracial, but he looked more black. And this is what made blacks vote for him. Now, the reason why he got in there because the Republicans that ran against him, they were trash. Mitt Romney. And then not going to spit on his grave. He was a POW, John McCain, the Maverick. They were lousy candidates. And individuals. Hillary was running in the primary against Obama. They didn't like each other. So Obama made her Secretary of State. But when it comes to politics, something else you need to know. The polls. I would never believe the polls. 
And here's why. They can manipulate the polls. See, I've done a number of shows out here on statistics. Just because you quote me a statistic, it doesn't mean that that statistic is correct. Because I'm asked, well, how did you come up with that number? What statistics did you use? Did you use a confidence factor of 68, 95, or 98 percent? Did you use a single variable or multivariable? How did you do it? In other words, when I talk about statistics and polling, who did they poll? Did they poll 15 percent Republicans, 85 percent Democrats? It's all about the methodology. And a number of individuals don't know that. And see, when you are low information or ignorance or, or, or you pay no attention, but you're voting from your feelings and you're voting for this person who could destroy the country because you don't like this person, in my humble opinion, you shouldn't be allowed to vote. You should take a civics test because to me, or you're probably on government assistance. Now, nobody's going to take the government assistance away. You need that safety net. But the bottom line is, you have to know what you're voting for. You just can't vote for somebody because of their race or gender. I want to see the most qualified person get in there. It's, uh, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you an example. And I'm going to go back to Kamala Harris again. She's talking about, she talked about Trump. He wasn't qualified to be president. I'm like, he wasn't qualified to be president. He was already president. So he has a record. But how can somebody like you who has never been president tell me I'm not qualified? That's like, I'm an engineer. So that's like somebody telling me I'm a civil engineer. That's like somebody who's never been a civil engineer tell me I'm not qualified to be a civil engineer when I've already made the recommendations. This is what design you need to use because of its strength and its and the factor of safety. And they're telling me I'm not qualified to be a civil engineer. Well, I'm going to ask, have you ever been a civil engineer? Do you even know what civil engineering is? Now, again, Bottom line, I'm just telling you all how government works. Most of you don't know how government works. Get involved with the technology. If these lefties out here can use Zoom, you can use Zoom. Now, another thing I have to say. They're calling the Republicans weird because they want families. Meanwhile, the weirdness is coming from the left. When you have in the White House two dudes, two sugary dudes, bumping and grinding and putting it on camera in the White House, like it's a porno. A, 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 a flick out there? That's weird to me. Got all these men dressing up. Now, I'm not against the LGBTQ. Hey, do whatever you do. I don't agree with your lifestyle. Don't force it on me. And this is what the left and people like Kamala Harris want to do. They want to force a lifestyle. And we're all the immigrants. They're giving the immigrants money when they come in. Free health care, they're taking care of all of the immigrants. Meanwhile, they haven't contributed anything to this country. And they're in all the cities. I live here in Lafayette, Indiana, and they're in all the hotels, nice hotels. And they're getting treated better than we are. We're also paying for Ukraine, all of our money. 
and you have some individuals that want UBI, universal basic income. See, my humble opinion, and I'm going to get strong with it right now, got to get people like uh, um, Ocasio-Cortez up. Got to get got to get her out of there. Has a big mouth, doesn't know anything. She went from bartender, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. How in the world did you all in New York vote for her? She's one that you just grab her hair and bend her over and just jump start it. And then keep it moving. Human toilet, that's what she is. How can you all vote for her? Because you all are low information voters. And she was young. She doesn't know anything. How could you vote for Jasmine Crockett? She doesn't know what he did. And I'm going to tell you something. These women that you have in the Democratic Party, they're going to kill you. These women are feminists. They don't like men. They don't like families. They don't like, and this is where the patriarchy comes from. They don't like that. They want to be able to do what they want to do. Well, that's fine. Let them be. And you men out here, if they're going to try to make it personal, you make it personal. Especially some of you divorced guys. You divorced guys, you go and vote for Kamala, you, you, you're out of your mind. You need to be pissed off and say, oh, this woman took me for every A, A B, C, D, E. I'm voting for this guy. We already have a soft enough country now. I mean, since I've been around, it's gotten soft. I mean, I look at NFL football, ticky-tack rules. A lot of these guys have been raised by their mamas. The mamas, some of them did a good job, a number of them didn't. And this is really hurting the individuals in the black community. And in my humble opinion, we have no black community. It's just Women and children in churches and foreigners coming in, bringing their beauty hair salons or, or beauty shops in there. They're bringing in their greasy fried chicken, like Kennedy fried chicken, and crown fried chicken in Philadelphia. They're bringing that in there. You got your preachers in there, their ass backwards. And they got lousy education. And see, so going back to what happened in Venezuela, it's what happens when you want a tyrannical kind of government. The government means they can, they think they can run over you. So here, they're not going to do it. Too many people have guns. Bottom line is, some of you need to wake the fuck up. Get out of your emotions. And I don't care how many books you read. Individuals think because they read a book that it's right. Well, I've written papers. I've got my sources. I wrote it based on my point of view. How I see it. But you need to get in the real world. But for the most part, like I said, Kamala Harris to challenge Trump to a debate. Realize she's not a nominee. And the Democrats, they're going to find a way, they'll find a way to try to cheat. So all you Republicans out there, you better keep your eyes open. You better make sure you got the right people down at the polling places. And you better set a guideline. No ballots after midnight. Because they are. They want to keep their power. Because Trump is the only thing that's stopping him from a one world government. But if you think Kamala got in, you think people like Putin, Benjamin Netanyahu, some of the Middle Eastern leaders, they're going to respect her. These guys, they don't want women in charge. And women ought to be happy here. Because you go over in those other countries, 
kind of shit you all are talking? Man, I'll molly whop you. Kept the laws to protect you. They don't realize it. There ain't men. It's the men who gave you your bread of him. Yeah, you gave you gave all of us life. But it's the men who are giving you your rights. We're a civil country. You should be glad that you have some. This is why at the end of my videos, I always say, be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. See, life is never going to be fair. And if you want equality, you got to compete. You can't. You just can't pick and choose where you want equality. You got to be responsible. You got to be an adult. And you have a number of us out here who are not adults. They think they can do whatever they want without any consequences. Now, again, this is going to be a big election. And my friends on the right, I want you to vote. You know, like I said, that monstrosity down in Atlanta just made black people look like a world all into that sex, drugs, and money. That's the problem with blacks. We're celebrated if we come out of jail. But we're hated if we start a business or have education. Our race is the most backwards race ever. It's why we have no power. And many of us will never have power. And, and that's because a lot of the older generations, and shout out to Minister Jap. Now, Minister Jap, you always forget Gen X too. It's not just the baby boomers, it's some Gen Xers. A lot of us coming up, like my parents were from the silent generation. We were taught to go to school and get a job. We weren't taught to start a business. I didn't even learn anything about starting a business until the 90s and 2000s. And if you want to get ahead, you have to start a business. You have to take your talent and you do not need college. You know, we've been under this realm that we have to go to college. You can learn with your hands. You can make money off of YouTube. Get your hustle right. And brothers, don't make pussy your number one. You're, you're putting pussy on a pedestal and you're losing money. That's a liability. It's not about that. You got to be real about yourself. Stop simping. Hey, you go out and you vote for whoever you want, you want to vote and, and your family. Don't let your family, don't let anybody take you off your grind. Don't let anybody. Bottom line is this. It's your future. If you have people out there, and and, and 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 Brother Jap is right. I couldn't even talk to anybody about a business, especially somebody that looked like me, because they're going to be jealous of me. They're going to call me a coon. When in essence, people like Roland Martin, Joy, Joy Behar, Joy Reid, let's stick with the blacks. All you blacks on CNN, they're the real coons. They sold you out. They talk about race. The left, they're your real sexist. They're your real racist. And let me give you an example. When Sarah Palin was the running mate of John McCain back in 2008, the men were getting her, getting on her, calling her a bunch of names. I'm like, oh, we're the feminists. You see, the feminists pick and choose on who's a misogynist. And you're going to hear the word misogyny. Those are cold words. You better vote with me. No. Call me a misogynist. I'm going to be a misogynist against you. No, I don't like you. I didn't say I didn't like women. Call me a male chauvinist. No, I'm a male chauvinist like you. In fact, if I was a real male chauvinist, I'd say you need to be back in the kitchen. But the majority of you women, 
You can't cook today anyway. We don't need you in the kitchen fucking up our food. We cook it ourselves. And it's not an angry rant. It's going on a little further. Because I'm just sick of all the BS about this Kamala Harris out here. And then you got the wrong people. The ones that are comfortable with their jobs. And these are your older, older, particularly older black people. Your 304s out there. These are the people that don't read, don't care. They're too comfortable in life. And they think we're still marching in Selma, Alabama. And we're not. They don't look at life for what it is. They don't look at the real world. They're about themselves. And they're trying to tell me how to vote. Don't let your family, particularly the women in your family, tell you how to vote. Talk to you guys out there. So if you really, for you black people, you really want some black pride, especially you men out there, I can't get to the older guys. They're done. But you younger guys out there, listen to people like me. You want to be an engineer? You, 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 you want to be a scientist? I can tell you how to do it. I got a STEM channel out here. There's nothing wrong with being so-called that nerd. You know, everybody from the streets isn't tough. They talk that toughness. But you look at where they are. Many of them haven't even left the streets, and they're always going to be there. Why? Because they're comfortable being there. Now, some can't get out. Some don't want to get out. See, some oppression isn't caused by the system. It's caused by you. But we tend to blame others. So one of the Roland Martins of the world, the Joy Behars, the Sonny Houstons of the world. In fact, what I'm urging everybody to do right now is turn off your TV. Turn on YouTube to people like me. We're going to get into some more information. But again, let me review to you for this last time how government works. You have three branches of government, executive, judicial, and you have your legislative branch. There's supposed to be checks and balances. And then you have your federal, you have your state, and you have your local government. And all of your government is important especially your local government, because you want to deal with the school boards. If you want to get some of this bullshit trans stuff out of your schools, this rainbow stuff out of your schools, you need to be voting for your school board. You need to pay attention to your school board. You need to be paying attention to what your kids are learning and reading. And in college, if you're spending a lot of money on these colleges, you need to pay attention. Now, I have beat down college enough. A lot of these majors, college is just an indoctrination fest. And it's it's a big scam, so they'll get your money. And when your kids come out with a degree, the degree is a bullshit degree, and they're working a job that's not even related to their major. They're pushing paper for about $20, $25 an hour. And they're allowing, they're allowing themselves to think that they're educated. I know I hear this from the black female. We're the most educated. No, you're the most enrolled. You're not the most educated. Because your education has gotten you into a lot of debt. And just because you have more materials doesn't mean anything your decision making and a lot of you black females out there and I'm going to say that you're going to vote Democrat because you're not going to want to hear the other side and this is another thing 
we as black people have been taught that the Republicans are the racist ones. When it's your Democrats that started the Ku Klux Klan to basically get rid of the Republican Party, because a lot of the blacks were Republicans. Remember back way back then, you had the Ku Klux Klan invade and invade a Republican National Convention. People don't know that. And we have a lot of history out there. Just because you read something, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. And this word coon, if you don't see things the way Roland Martin, Don Lemon, Joy Reid, April Ryan, all these blacks out here, you don't see it their way, they call you a coon. When in essence, they're coons. Uh, you hear these white liberals, you know, uh, late Robert KKK Bird saying they're white niggers. They're he said it. He's a Klan man. But he was a senator. And the Civil Rights Act, they're saying the Democrats passed. No, the Republicans passed. In fact, the Civil Rights Act of 19, it could have been the Civil Rights Act of 1957. You know who didn't want it? Lyndon B. Johnson, when he was a congressperson. He didn't want it. And this is when Eisenhower was president. Because that's when blacks were, were Republicans. And a lot of what you're hearing right now, Kamala Harris, some of these black chicks out here, these liberal white chicks, it's all regurgitated. They're repeating it from CNN. And this is what the media wants. The media wants to put out information that they want you to hear. They don't care anything about you. The media is your biggest enemy. And the bottom line with the media, the media is not to be trusted. Now, again, I used to look at Fox News. I don't watch Fox too much anymore. Guys like Bill O'Reilly, Tucker Carlson, they have their own channels. And we here on YouTube, we have our own channels as well. In fact, we, we get better information than the media does. And I'm putting it out unapologetically. Because like I said, Kamala Harris, ranked number two senator. And right now she's making Bernie Sanders look good. And then what the Democrats are doing, see, they, they should have known and I knew Joe Biden wasn't a man when he slipped up the steps, the Air Force One. He wouldn't take any questions. He was always in his basement. Then Charlemagne, the guy, I'm, in the, I'm just going to tell you, Breakfast Club is trash. He let Joe Biden punk him. You don't know who you're going to vote for, whether it's me or Trump, you ain't black. I say, hey, I'm black and I'm voting for the other guy. See, a number of these individuals in 2020 voted for Biden. They didn't like Biden, but they didn't want Trump. It was a vote against Trump. But what they voted for was our gas prices. You had a lot when we dealt with logistics, our supply chain. We were no longer energy energy independent. We were dependent on energy. The cost of the goods and services were much higher. That's what we voted for. You want to go buy a used car? It was hot. Then we had the silly coronavirus, which some people got, got jabbed. And some of them checked out. The dollar. To print more money, the value of the dollar is down a drain. 
the education system is down the drain. The value system is down the drain. And I don't care if you're part of the LGBTQ community and, and what you all ought to do, the alphabet community, you need to start checking the imbeciles in your movement there because they're making you all look bad. Because I know not all of you are bad people. I know not. I mean, it's funny. It shocked me when I saw Amber Rose, the one that invented the slut walk. Well, she was at the Republican National Convention. And the Republicans, I just want to say this. If some of them come over there from the left and want to be part of the right, embrace it. And also, just want you to know, too, it's because you want traditional values. It doesn't make you weird. See, a lot of these individuals, you must realize that you have a lot of offspring from the hippie days, the 60s. Because, you know, the 60s changed everything. Because you had a number of individuals who went to college. They didn't fight for anything. A number of them lived off the government. That's what these politicians have done. They lived off of our tax money for years and years. They don't understand how the real world works. They don't even care about how the real world works. They only care about themselves. And we're supposed to have a representative government. But we don't really have a representative government. We have a lot of donors who want certain people in power. And if you look at it, again, going back to Kamala Harris, she's out here like she's the nominee. She hasn't been nominated. You know how many delegates she has? She has zero. And to get nominated as a Democrat, you need roughly 2,500. Now, Joe Biden had 400 and something. And you have to look at the money. They're looking at, well, she's raised a lot of money. Well, what you have to understand about money, some of that money transferred from Joe Biden to her, and it makes it look like she raised a lot of money. Bottom line, she hasn't. And with Trump, Trump is a private citizen. He's using a lot of his own money, so he can pay for his own advertising. How do you think he could go from Chicago to Harrisburg when Harris could do that, and what Harris has to learn, she has to grow up. She laughs when she doesn't know the answer. And the bottom line with her, start asking, peppering her with questions. Start asking, okay, would you pay 70, 80% of your money in taxes? Okay, how come 15 to 20, how come 15 to 20 million migrants came in here? Do you want them in your town? It's funny because they came to your house. Um, you talk about families. What's wrong with families? Why didn't you have a family? Now, I know some women don't want kids, and I understand that because we got too many women with kids now who don't need kids. But you don't call them. Where? How come you're not calling out the individuals on your side who are black feminists, white feminists, alphabet people? Because you like it. Because you want to be part of it. And how come you're trying to be black for convenience? You're not black. You come from an Indian background. And then you lied about Kwanzaa. You're about 59 years old, maybe a little older than me. You're a late baby boomer. And you said you used to celebrate Kwanzaa. When you didn't, you don't even know what Kwanzaa is. Kwanzaa was started Back in 1966, you lied. You lied about the border. Trump, Trump, Trump at least got part of the wall built for the border. You did. You want to come on in so you can get more votes. That's why you're giving them free stuff. That's what you want. And then you want to give a, you know, a lot of these women out here, they see you as a beacon and when they see you as a beacon, they believe that they can go and disrespect men. 
Let me tell you something. You're going to piss a lot of men off. And they're going to be like a muscle-bound man and put your face in the sand, ladies. Some of these new men aren't playing. They're tired. I don't mean to say that, but this is real out here. You get some of you sisters out here think you can walk up and, and hit a man and then call you. No, it's not going to work. Not going to work. People are tired. Then you got Kamala Harris. The reason why she says what she says, she's trying to get a reaction. If you hold your cool and make her answer the questions, that's why she didn't want to go on Fox News. That's why she doesn't want to go on Newsmax. She doesn't want to answer tough questions. If you're going to be president, you need to answer tough questions. Kamala Harris came to Indianapolis because I believe the Zetas or the AKAs were there because she's a member. I'm a member of Phi Eta Psi. It's not a D9 fraternity. We're, it's, we're still in the black fraternity. We're of the NIC. We couldn't be part of the Divine Nine. And I'm happy that we're not part of the Divine Nine. But we're still a black Greek letter organization. And some of my fraternity brothers, they vote along with the Democrats as well. Let me tell you something. The Democrats, they're going to keep you in chains. You want to know where your real races are? You vote Democrat. Now, I'm not saying the Republicans are any better. What I'm saying is you open your mind and you don't cancel the other half that you don't agree with. Because you know what? You might agree with some things they say if you listen. And you don't let people tell you who to vote for and what to vote for. Now, I might sound like a hypocrite, so let me take it a step further. You don't let people tell you to vote for something that doesn't make sense. Vote for something that makes sense. In other words, don't vote for someone because they are a woman. They're black. Or they're, they're Asian. Not the reason to vote. If you want to do that, stay, stay out. Stay home. Stay home. Because in the end, bottom line, when it comes to voting, do some research. Don't vote on feelings. And even don't even listen to everything I say. Look it up for yourself. I'm just giving you information. But I will tell you a bit of this. Trump's rallies are a hell of a lot greater than Kamala Harris's rallies. That means he's getting his people out. See, Trump is the nominee. Might not like you. You can call him weird all he wants. I respect Trump. Going up there in the lion's den, taking the fire. Kamala Harris is never going to take the fire because her record will be exposed. She had a bad record. Black people, you remember this, especially your brothers. She arrested a lot of you for marijuana charges for a long time. She didn't have to do much work either. Willie Brown and Montel Wood, she blew away to the top. She couldn't even get 2% running for president in 2020. Tulsi Gabbard ended her career. But Joe Biden said he's going to elect a black woman. And he did that to the senior court. And he did that to the Supreme Court, too. That Katanja Jackson's not a very bright woman, either. He elected everybody that he's put in power, put in power for identity politics. And if you vote for identity politics, Get people that are unqualified to be in those positions. And when that happens, you get the dysfunction, you get the drama that you have now. In the end, be an informed voter. Vote for the issues, not for the race, not for the gender, and not for the lifestyle.
and know what you're voting for. Like I said, know what you're voting for. Because you might not think about it, but governmental policies affect the working people. And many of us are working people. So turn off the television. Do some research on your own. You don't have to agree with what somebody else says, but listen. Because in the end, when it comes to the two candidates, I'm already looking at Kamala right now. She's a fraud. She can't, she's not natural. She has to have a teleprompter. Somebody's going to feed her the questions. You don't have to like Trump, but he's doing it on his own, and he can handle it. Man nearly got his head blown off. When it comes to polit politics, be objective. We're too partisan. Both sides. It's become a money laundering scheme where the elites have all the money. And they decide who they want to put in power as well. But in the end, I will say this. Look at where you are today. Economically, educational wise. See if you're much freer today. See if you're paying less today or more today. Ask yourself, should I be in more, should I be more informed when it comes to voting? Don't let anybody influence your vote. In other words, I know mom, all of them, and don't let these don't let these older people out there, particularly black people, don't let them tell you, you got to vote the way they vote. We're not in the 1960s anymore. This is 2024. Many of them are going to die out. They live their lives. They didn't offer you any sound advice about starting a business. I wasn't offered that. You know what? Cost a lot of it. Cost cost us a lot. You know, a lot of these, especially black people, cost us opportunities. Now we have to figure everything out. And that's okay. But understand this. You live once. Make sure you vote on policies. Not your feelings. Because when it's when it comes to you, just like the United Negro College Fund used to say, it's your future. It's your choice. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 401 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're looking for some STEM content, check out the QCIS channel. On that channel, I'll give you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. And once I record all of my videos on YouTube, I upload them to my Twitter page, which is X. Now for the QCIS channel, since it is an educational channel, you can also find that channel on my LinkedIn page. And in the end, always be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. But the shoe fits, wear it. If you don't like the shoe, change it. And once again, Thank you for listening to this edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube.
Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful and gracious evening. God bless you. I'm out.